I forgot what these things are called. Ah, this is what happens when it's really late and you forget what exactly this thing is supposed to be. I just know that they use in the movies. <laughs> it sounds so dumb. Um, I know it takes me like a second to figure this out. All right, so anyway, action. So, my name is VJ and I am your host for JavaScript LA, as usual. Thank you guys for checking out this channel. And I felt like today, I thought I would do some videos on career advice. And I thought, you know, we've got a lot of programming videos, but a lot of times like when I hear from other people, especially at meetups, it's always kind of like, you know, really interested in learning programming. I really want to like get into this, but I don't know what exactly is the best step. How would you, you know, recommend I go about doing things? What's the path to success here? So I was thinking, you know, okay, maybe if I were to go back almost 10 years ago, right? And I think I've done like a video on this in the past, but probably it sucks. So might as well do it again, <laughs> right? Like and have a better one for you today. That's kind of like the point of these. Like there's a lot of things that people want to know and I feel like I can do it better each time. So that's kind of the fun of watching a YouTube video. Anyway, so going back 10 years ago, right? I was a young developer. Really, if you could call me a developer, I wasn't even that. I was just somebody, um, for those of you who kind of know my story from back in the day, I was really like a business, you know, graduate from college. And I had taken some computer science courses, but, you know, I had never really finished the computer science degree. And I thought, you know, um, it was really hard at that time. I kept thinking, you know, computer science, computer programming is really hard. Not only that, I think back then it was more difficult because we didn't have things like YouTube where, you know, if you didn't understand something, you could just like quickly type it up on YouTube and get a full length tutorial to help you understand all the difficult parts, right? Like back in the day, it was difficult. You had to read at libraries, you had to go and like buy textbooks or you buy like, <laughs> nobody does that. And you still, I mean, like people buy books online, but like, it was a lot harder. There wasn't any printed, I mean, there wasn't any digital material. It wasn't as, you know, um, you know, like more ubiquitous now as it is now, right? So like it was, um, it was a lot more difficult to figure something out. And then also there weren't communities, there weren't meetups, there weren't discords, there weren't slacks. Um, you couldn't go to like any like computer programming meet. You could, but it wasn't really like that great because the people running them you know, sometimes they might have been elitist people or arrogant and then, you know, like if you try to ask a question, it's like, how dare you ask me a question? <laughs> or who do you think you are? You know, you don't even know this thing and you want to be a programmer? Like, get out of here, right? So it was like, it was annoying back then. So that's why I kind of felt like it was hard. And also a lot of other things too, right? Like there's just like so many different combinations of stuff, right? I think like ultimately what I felt at that time was frustration because it was like, okay, I want to learn this. I want to be, you know, in the engineering field, but everybody just kind of makes it like, you know, like it's this difficult thing to do. You really have to, you know, really like burn the midnight oil and like sit there and, you know, do every problem in the book. And the life of a programmer is just, you know, um, pretty much that you're just doing that every night, every day, you know, and, um, you don't really get to have fun. You don't really get to, you know, explore the world. Most of your, you know, life is going to be in a lab, a computer lab and just like programming, programming, programming. See, I didn't really understand at that time though, that that is actually necessary <laughs> for pretty much anything. Um, it doesn't matter what your craft is. If you're gonna be good at something, you have to put in that time, right? But my peers in school used to tell me, oh yeah, you know, like computer programming is too hard. You know what, I just wanna like transfer to business. It's a little easier, you know, I can just finish this degree and then once I'm done, I can get out of here. Plus like, you know, when you're in business, you move up into management, right? And management's better because like, you don't have to like sit there with a computer for hours and hours and hours. You can go home, you know, you can just be the boss, kick your feet up on the desk like this, <laughs> right? And then just give the orders. So I don't know what I was thinking at that time. Probably I was just like confused, like a lot of the people that I meet now, like young people. And I was just like, uh, you know what? Maybe that's right. Maybe I should just go do business. It seems like it's a lot easier. 
Um, but so what happened afterwards was that, you know, I was, um, you know, in like the sales role. Like I, so I graduated college and I started doing sales and um, that was like my first job, um, my first true job. Cause actually before that, like I didn't really, I wasn't able to get a job. I was like struggling right after college. I finished it and then I started applying for all kinds of positions. And I ran into the classic, oh, you know, you need experience to be able to get the job. But then if you don't have a job, how are you supposed to get experience? So it was like <laughs> the catch-22 that everybody goes through. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll just do interning, right? Like maybe that's like my way in. So I started interning first, right? And like I did, I wanted to work in like video games. I thought like maybe I'll be a marketer for video games. That'd be kind of fun. Um, that was pretty hard though, because like everybody starts off, you know, on like unpaid positions and then basically you have to prove yourself to even get into like that world um, sometimes you can get paid but you also get paid like really low and it was just it was like really difficult again difficult right and I think that is gonna be sort of like the theme that like I'm gonna go with with this particular video right it's um <clears throat> over like the series of time right like you just realize like things are difficult it is difficult to pretty much do anything um especially if you're going to start working in any field so what you want to do is you want to build like a hardcore like work ethic mentality right like before you say i want to be a programmer like you want to be somebody who's like okay i can commit you know at least you know if i'm gonna do something i can commit at least eight hours a day right minimum on whatever it is i choose to do and you can feel good about that. You're not going to be like, oh, I'm going to be lazy. You know, I'm going to kick up my feet <laughs> again. I'll do it here. Kick up my feet and be like, I'm going to give you the order, right? Because if you do that and you think, oh, I'm going to escape from work. And you think that just being the boss is like, you know, the ultimate goal. Everybody needs to be the boss, right? Like the, the bosses are the ones that are rich. <laughs> if you do that, you're not building skill, right? And ultimately when you start bossing other people with skills, they're gonna kind of be like, you know, who the hell are you, right? Like, excuse the French, but like, who are you, right? Like to tell me what to do. You don't know what I do. You don't have no idea like what it is that I can do. And you know, if you're gonna tell me how to do my job without any context, <laughs> then I pretty much, you know, um, can take my business elsewhere. It works both ways, right? Like, so you work for a company, right? And some companies like, you know, they have a lot of management where like, they don't really care about the details. They just want the thing done. And so like, you know, they just tell people, do it, do it, do it, do it. And so then, you know, like you get the other hand where people who are working for these companies do actually do their work, but they charge a lot of money, right? A lot of money. And then the big boss, right? Who's got his feet up in the air, like it's like what's this bill it's like so huge like i generated sales and like i lost almost like 90 percent of my revenue to like this one developer that's what's gonna happen to you right so if you're that's my point right essentially if you're the one who kind of like says i don't want to do hard work uh you're gonna be screwed long term right and so going back to me like that was kind of like what was happening to me right like for the first few years of trying to even like you know, find work, find any kind of job. I was like, because I had taken these easy paths, I was just kind of like, oh, I can't find work. You know, like I, had, I guess I'll just do internships at, you know, no pay or whatever, right? Or even I'll take like a low paying job. And so by, you know, some sheer force of brute, you know, uh, effort, right? And that's what it comes down to. If you're gonna do the sales thing, you gotta like knock on a lot of doors. You have to call, call a lot of people. <laughs> Um, I got a sales job and then it wasn't my thing that I wanted to do, but I decided, you know what, I'm just going to do it. And in the meantime, I'll look for something else. And when something else better comes, I'll jump to that, right? That seems to be like another core piece of advice a lot of people give. It's like, okay, yeah, just bide your time with one job and then, you know, just use it to platform yourself to the next, then platform yourself to the next, then the next, 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 and then you'll be at the top one day. Again, though, like you have to do that with a solid foundation, right? Like if you just kind of like jump from one place to another, to another without building any skills, you're screwing yourself over in the process again. So some of those things I did, <laughs> that's why I'm telling you these, you know, in this camera here and I'm telling you, you know, like 
you got to pay attention to your career. It's extremely important. Um, if you're in school and you're watching this or you're in high school and you're watching this or, you know, you're just uh, young in general. <laughs> if you feel young too, that counts. Um, essentially, you just want to be, you know, uh, a little bit more um, strong about like what it is you want to do in life. And you need to, like again, work towards great work ethic. Uh, because that is what's going to propel you. So, you know, when I was finally starting to get that was what actually mattered in life. Like, I realized, okay, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't jump from one job to another, to another, to another. Maybe I should stay with this particular job that I'm at and just do better at it. So, you know, I was doing the sales thing and then I was like learning about all the aspects of the business as I was doing the sales. And so because I started doing that, I was recognized more at my company because I could do beyond more than just sales, right? I could call a lot of people and like say, hey, you wanna buy this thing? You wanna buy this thing? You know, like and talk about all the features and benefits. But the things that I did were that were more interesting was like come up with new ideas that, you know, our company could sell to potential salespeople. I mean, potential customers, I'm the salesperson. But I came up with things that I could sell and then like I helped architect that um, in the back end, like at my company. And then around that time too, like as I started seeing like, oh, okay, maybe if we create this digital ad or this digital ad email or something like that, maybe, you know, um, we can take a look at how to get better response the next time. And so I started dabbling a little bit with the code on the back end. I kind of was able to do that because I have the computer science like skills from before, but it wasn't it wasn't really like strong at all. It was just very, very basic. And so I started thinking, you know what? I want to like focus in on this again. Uh, if I learn my computer science properly, you know, if I hit the books and I just read a little bit each week and maybe like practice some of the problems, uh, those things will help me in the future when I go to like pitch more product ideas, either to my team or to the customer. And maybe we'll get more sales as a result. So it kind of worked a little bit in my favor for a while until I hit a wall, right? Because I was still really young and then like I was starting to butt heads with a lot of people in higher positions at my previous company. And, you know, despite having good, you know, ideas or whatever, um, I think people didn't want me to rise too fast in that organization. Uh, and I think maybe rightfully so too when I kind of look back because if you give like you know a young kid like too much free reign right with all of these ideas um and this is i'm not saying this is correct thinking because it goes both ways right look at mark zuckerberg mark zuckerberg made for facebook and look at him right so but like you know if you give a young kid without much experience like the full reign to like doing the whole product development and all that then essentially like um, it's going to cost the company a lot more potentially in risk. Uh, the kid may like leave, you know, like, you know, you might have, uh, mistakes that, you know, somebody else has to clean up. So there's all kinds of things, right? Like, you know, like I, I being the young kid could like, you know, basically kind of talk smoke, you know, and mirrors and like make things, make promises that can't be fulfilled. And, you know, I wouldn't know any better because, like, I'm not, you know, old enough to, like, have that maturity to, like, <laughs> push back, right? So, um, so there's a lot of things that you kind of, I guess, like, my point with this, right? Like, is there's a lot of things that you kind of have to kind of grow up and learn to, like, over time. And I don't think college really teaches you that. So, but if you're watching these videos and you're kind of watching them, let's say you are in high school or you're kind of, you know, in college or even let's say you finished all that and you're like now just kind of like looking for a job. I think, again, I'm gonna point back to like, rather than try to rise up through the ranks and you know, get to the top fast, um, focus rather on like just building, you know, your skills, building your, you know, what you're doing at your job right now, you know, whatever it is. Let's say you are like aspiring to be, you know, a programmer for Microsoft or something like that, or let's say, you know, you're getting into your first front end job and you've been just practicing all year at a boot camp. 
get good at those things because that's what actually matters, right? Like really just start understanding like every component of, you know, front end uh, web development, if that's what you want to be, right? Um, go and learn as much as you can about CSS. Go and learn as much as you can about JavaScript and don't just be like, oh, okay, I want to learn, you know, frameworks like Angular and React if you don't know your JavaScript fundamentals because you're better off actually knowing your JavaScript fundamentals than you are like, you know, just chasing what everybody else is trying to do so you can look cool too. Uh, you know, because th that's kind of coming back to me, right? Like for a while I was sort of obsessed with looking cool, especially like when I was young, I wanted to be like the big hotshot at the company. Again, kick my feet up, um, you know, be the boss, right? Like all these things I'm telling you, all these things are sort of coming together now, right? Like it doesn't matter because, you know, what ultimately happens is you, when you rise up too fast and you don't really focus on your core stuff, you don't develop that hardcore work ethic, then um, you get to this point where like you are like irresponsible, like I'm saying, right? And you make promises that you can't keep and then, you know, everything sort of comes crashing down. And so I would say like that would be like sort of what happened to me like towards the end of my you know, sales rule at like where I was and things did start coming, you know, to a crashing halt. And so uh, for a while I was kind of like in limbo a little bit and I didn't have any other career options besides that one job that I was starting to kind of feel burned at. Um, and probably I had burned some bridges there. Um, you know, I had to kind of have like a little bit of like, a, I don't know how to describe it here, but just like maybe like I had to kind of, maybe like the, the term is come to Jesus, right? Like I had to have that, like, you know, just kind of come back down to earth and think about what it is that I really wanted to do in life and what I wanted to excel at. And so um, I didn't lose my job at that particular company, but I quit, right? And, um, you know, I quit because I felt like, you know, at that time, it wasn't what I wanted to do ultimately. Like I was happy with, you know, the progress that I had made to becoming like, you know, a product specialist at that company and doing really well in that role until like it got like to a point where like I was kind of, um, you know, glass ceilinged off <laughs> and I couldn't do any more. And so, you know, I decided, okay, you know what, this, this thing is limiting me, so I might as well quit. And so, but after I quit, right, like I was kind of like back to square one because then I had to start looking for something else that I could do and, you know, spend a whole lot of time trying to figure out how I'm going to master that next thing. And so that led me back to the whole programming thing because I was like, you know what, I did pretty good with that uh, as I was, you know, um, at this marketing company that I used to work for, you know, and even in school, I was doing somewhat well at programming. Why don't I just this time around, like really just study it, really, really study it and, um, you know, see where it lands me. Maybe I could transition to a role where I'm doing uh, software development or web development as opposed to just, you know, half-assing my life and, you know, chasing random jobs and try and skip from one place to another to another and to another it's not going to help me right like i don't want to be that guy and that even back then i knew that right like i didn't want to be that guy who you know worked at several different jobs but never really got good at anything and then finally when he was like 50 or 60 retired with basically like nothing you know um just kind of like burned bridges everywhere and like basically didn't have you know, because like I jumped from one position to another, to another, to another, just to get like the big salary and then like lose it all in like a few months because I got laid off because I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't want to be that guy, right? And then have to start all over again and try to do that and jump, 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 jump. It's just not worth it. So I decided, you know what, I'm instead going to like focus on, you know, maybe web development. That was what I was thinking at that time because like I felt like I was doing pretty well with it on the back end. And so I started learning about email marketing and then how it's actually done as well as advertising and how that's actually done and the programming involved. Then I started, you know, um, trying to like find jobs in that space. It wasn't easy. So the you know, next point of advice for like people watching this, right? Like if you're looking for a programming job and you're not able to get it right away, 
maybe what you can do is, you know, freelance for your, your cousin or freelance for, you know, like your best friend's, um, I don't know, like husband or something like that. I don't know. I'm just making it up, right? Like, so freelance for somebody, I'm sure you know, like, maybe like, you know, your uncle or like whoever you know that owns a business, you could like do a WordPress site for them or you could do, you know, um, like an email marketing campaign for them. A lot of people need that. And even I think to the, this day too, like, you know, big tech is its own thing. Google, Amazon, you know, uh, Microsoft, Facebook, all these companies, they do like, you know, extremely well. And, you know, they do like really great at like all these different platforms that they market. But I feel like the smaller businesses don't really know how to do tech very well, nor do they know how to do marketing very well. So that's actually your, you know, area of expertise. A lot of times like these businesses will like outsource their work to maybe agencies or agencies will call them and then tell them, hey, we can do this business for you and, you know, just pay us like, you know, five grand or something like that and we'll get all this done for you and you don't have to worry about it. We'll just bring some more sales to your, to your restaurant or to your business. And so there's a lot of small businesses like that. What they like even more is like if they can get it for like a cheaper price. And so sometimes like that's where you can get your in, right? If you want to learn on the job. And I think the thing about freelance is you get a lot more time than you would if you were to work, um, you know, an eight hour job a day, right? Because um, eight hours kind of goes by that quick. <laughs> and, you know, like the beginning of the day, you might be kind of just getting into work and checking emails. And then like before you know, it, it's like already one hour passed. And then like now you're trying to like do some work and then you get distracted by somebody else coming and like having a meeting with you and then like you go to lunch and then you come back and you have errands and then like you realize oh I only have three more hours to do this work and so you cram 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 you make it four hours because you wait all the way till six o'clock then you go home and drive through traffic right so it's really really limited whereas like if you freelance you can actually spend the entire day right and you can just you can choose what hours you want so you can actually use like a a concierge eight hours to actually learn that subject and I feel like sometimes like when I think back to like when I learned the most it was when I was freelancing because I was like okay I have the dedicated time to actually practice and learn this thing and then usually the deliverable you know like with small businesses they're a little bit more lenient because they know it takes time not all small businesses some people are still going to be like I need it yesterday but most people will give you at least, you know, a couple weeks to play around and figure something out before they, you know, say, okay, I want a status update. So if you can give a status update at your leisure, that's actually really helpful because then so long as you can kind of just show them like, okay, this thing is improving. I got the design done. Now I'm like writing the HTML. Now I'm writing the CSS. Now I'm writing the JavaScript and putting all this together. They're going to be happy. They're going to be happy with that. They're going to be like, you know what? I trust this person, they're doing their job. They're not actually ripping me off. Here's a check for two grand. And then you're like, two grand, yay, I did it. <laughs> and then, um, you know, you have money, right? And you also have experience, more importantly. And so that's what I'm talking about, right? Like, so if you can spend your time building experience in those eight hour segments, you develop that work ethic, you'll do better. Right? You'll do a lot better than a lot of the web developers that are actually employed because a lot of those web developers, especially the more senior ones, um, and I wouldn't say this, this is kind of like a general sweeping statement, um, but there are people out there who get very comfortable and they just kind of like stop caring, right? Like they just, and even myself too, like, so I'm guilty of this, right? Like as I started becoming a web developer on a full-time salary, at the beginning I wasn't like this, but uh, towards like the middle, Right, like where I started um, feeling a little bit more confident, like I could do it. I started to put off work, right? And again, me being idiotic, I don't know why I did it, but I, I, I have the, the maturity now, right? So um, I would just think, oh yeah, I can, I can get this done in like two hours or this only takes four hours, you know, I'll get, I'll get it done, right? And then the rest of the time, like I would just like go on Facebook or social media and then read like stupid news articles, <laughs> you know, or chat with friends. And, um, you know, like maybe like think about other things like, oh, how I want to go like, you know, check out some concert in LA uh, or like, you know, I want to go and hit on some girls, you know, <laughs> at the bar. Like, I, I, you know, like those are things that I was doing as the, again, you know, like in my 20s and uh, rightfully so. I mean, your 20s, like you're still kind of young and you can, 
you don't always think about work. You don't always want to be thinking about work. But at the same time, you should, right? Like if you're going to take this career seriously, you should. You have to build that work ethic. So ultimately coming back to that, right? So I was just, you know, um, not really focused. And even though I had finally got that web developer job that I'd wanted, right? Like I started losing the focus and falling apart again like a dumb person. <laughs> so um, it took me a little bit more time to realize, hey, I got to stop this. You know, I can't just, um, you know, you know, just clock it in, right? Like say, oh, okay, I'm just going to do the minimum amount of work and then, you know, like call it a day and then, you know, I'm mentally checked out. If I was doing that for a while, but what I realized was that like, as I was starting to do that, a lot of other people who were actually taking the hard works part seriously were catching up to me and they could even do the work that I was doing and other people, you know, outside of the US were also catching up and they were able to kind of do what I was doing. And so I was sort of, you know, in this done, like this position where my job could have been outsourced like that, like instantly. And I was like, oh my God, you know, like I, I I'm worth this much money, but like now, like it's almost a question, should I be worth this much money? Because somebody else can do what I'm doing, you know, like for cheaper. And it came down to that many times. Like one company that I worked at, like as a programmer, was like, you know what, um, I don't really believe you're worth this much money. Um, we're gonna like put you to the test. And so they try to like, you know, really test my knowledge. Um, they kind of like pushed me to like get a lot of projects done on even tighter deadlines. And um, I was really struggling for a while. I was like, you know, um, one company that I was with, you know, actually didn't have the patience and let me go. So I was like, oh, this sucks. So from that point on, I decided, okay, you know what? I'm going to take this seriously. Eight hours a day minimum of pure work, you know, and for what, when I say work, I'm not like saying, okay, I'm just going to work on that company's thing. Like, I mean, like I'm saying like solid programming work, right? Where you like study, you learn something and you get better at it. So like, cause I'll be honest with you, right? Like when you work a corporate job, you're probably only going to be working maybe like two to three hours a day on whatever it is that your boss has given you like as an assignment unless like you're at again like a big super company like microsoft amazon facebook whatever right like the fan companies because they actually know what they're doing but if you're working for like corporate america companies most of the time it's just going to be like this kind of like water cooler kind of environment where you're just doing like a little bit of work three hours of work four hours of work and then you call it a day and most of it is you know stuff that you can do without really like taxing your brain, right? So sometimes like in the space of web development, you can do stuff that's like, um, you know, updating a page to change the content, change an image, you know, change some CSS colors, um, rewrite a function so it's a little bit more efficient. These are things that, you know, don't consume all of your energy all day, right? <laughs> And I want to be careful here because I'm not saying, you know, burn all of your energy all day. That'll just make you die faster, right? But what I'm saying to you is that, like, you want to realize, okay, like, I'm doing this kind of, like, menial work. And if I keep doing it day in, day out, day out, and day out, where I don't actually think about, like, what I'm doing. I'm just kind of, like, doing whatever they ask me to do and just get it done. Again, like, just cashing in, um, you know, like... I forget what the term is, but like, you know, like when the actors kind of like don't really act, they just come and like collect a paycheck. I think that's the term, right? Like, and you feel that in the movie, you're like, oh, this movie sucked. Even though this big actor was in it, like it felt like he was just collecting a paycheck, right? That's exactly the feeling you feel. So, because you know that they weren't really working hard. And like uh, Adam Sandler, I think was guilty of that for a long ass time. I think he still is, right? Cause like he just basically makes formulaic movies. So, you don't want to fall into that trap because if you do that, then one day you'll be like in that position that I was talking about where, you know, let's say like the company comes in and like they feel like you haven't really been doing your job and they're like, oh, you know what, uh, we could like outsource this um, because you just basically, you know, do these, um, you know, small little updates and we need more and we're not really sure that you can do it because you haven't really demonstrated that you can to us. So we're going to give this job to somebody else. You're still working with us, but, you know, um, like, I don't think any company will actually say this to you, 
but they'll probably just kind of give you like it's implied that you're basically kind of sandboxed and when you get sandboxed like that's the worst because like there's really no future for you you either quit right or you get fired right let go um, and so you don't want to be in that position that's why I'm saying to you like if you can spend more time per day like even if you're not doing anything else at your company like let's say you finished all your errands for the day at your company right go and learn for like four more hours right like something you know anything pick a technology like this month I started learning about AWS and Lambda functions and I was like you know what this is really handy and also it wasn't just that like I spent a lot of different days like learning a lot of different technologies actually because um, and I'll probably show this in another video, like my own study tactics, because I feel like that's kind of helpful. Um, but like the short and long of it is, right, like I, I usually spend like about two hours a day, like just trying to like learn something on the job. So either I'll learn about like a new technology that might have come out, like um, React Hooks, for example, that was something that I didn't really know. So I spent like two hours with it and I was like, okay, I got this. You know, another one was um, animations with React. I spent a lot of time looking at Gatsby and just reading over the documentation and really just kind of like struggling with like, you know, a lot of the command line problems that I had and I figured those out. Um, then Lambda functions with AWS and like how you set them up and like how you, you know, connect them to, you know, like these uh, routing um, gateways and then, you know, like you can send emails with Amazon SES, which is a simple email service, or you can use SMTP, which you know, um, is built in with Node.js. So a lot of this stuff actually I might go over too in like some of the videos that, you know, I put out on this channel, how to do some of these things. Or I might invite like speakers to kind of talk about that. That's kind of like, <laughs> if I don't have the time, like I get a speaker to help out with that. But essentially, um, that that's actually kind of like coming back to me, right? So like, the thing that makes me a lot better now is that like I actually respect that, that work ethic, right? Like, so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna study for part of my day and then I'm going to work on the things that I need to get done that I know like are needed for the job and then the rest of the time like I'm going to continue studying and when those eight hours are up then yeah I'll just kind of relax like go in um, go to the gym you know or uh, maybe cook something uh, and usually now like I try to like do at least a little bit of exercise because I feel like if I don't then I can't make it through the night <laughs> So, um, but what I'll do is like, I will usually study a little bit more at night and then I'll also reward myself with, you know, like a movie or a video game. Um, I'll, <laughs> I would say I don't really have friends cause like I don't chat with anybody, um, you know, during quarantine at the moment other than like, you know, just discord and slack. So if you're on discord and slack, reach out to me, but essentially, yeah, like um, you know, I, I try to like, you know, just like talk to people a little bit, you know, and just relax a little bit because I feel like all those things that you feel like the emotions you feel too are still valid, right? Like those feelings that I felt in college where I didn't want to be stuck in a lab, didn't want to be working like, you know, hundreds of hours. It is true that you're going to be doing that as a programmer, but it's also on you to manage your own stress, manage your own energy levels, um, especially whatever you eat too, like that's really important. You don't want to be eating junk food all the time. You actually want to eat, be eating pretty clean because that will help you, um, you know, keep the energy levels up. You know, if you, you know, eat your, and I, I'm going to like maybe say like the base stuff. I'm not like an expert at this, but I would just say like, you know, if you eat like more greens, you eat more salads, you eat more like, you know, um, supplements like fish oil and stuff like that. Those things actually help, right? If you eat less meat and you eat like more, um, you know, just vegetables, like that actually will help you to you move away from like eating fried food. Um, if you do eat meat, you kind of eat like clean or lean meats, those will help you as well. Um, just anything to help you kind of like, you know, just stay more, you know, uh, lean, you know, energetic, those things will help you. So you want to start looking for those kind of groceries as well and cook at home because if you cook at home, then you know what's going into your food so those are also things that you should consider especially if you're going to be a long-term programmer because that will help you like to just keep going keep going um and plus it helps your mood too right like the other thing you can do is smile like you have to smile a lot you have to be able to be like okay you know what this was a really hard day for me but if i can think 
oh, the long, bigger picture, right? Like I studied really, really hard and I learned these technologies and maybe they're useless right now to somebody. Now maybe the skill I have is very superficial and shallow. But if I continue this path, right? Like if I just keep going, like for 30 days, I might be somebody like who's actually kind of good at this, right? Like, and that's what I tell a lot of people too, like who come to the group, right? And I know people were asking me this at tonight's meetup, but like, they were like, oh, you know, um, I can't even see myself doing a meetup because I'm not actually good at like, <laughs> you know, this subject. I was like, dude, there have been days where like, I did not know what I was talking about. And because I knew I had a meetup coming up, I just really, really, really worked hard to study because I had that extra pressure. And I was like, you know what? In 30 days, I have to give a talk on this. So I recommend to anybody watching this particular video, right? Like, um, do a meetup because that's going to be the easiest way and the fastest way you're going to learn something really quick and you know, have to be like good at it. You have that extra pressure. So use pressure. It helps you. But then, like I said, you know, take a step back and just kind of relax. Let yourself also just um, be a human uh, and, you know, go through that motion too. It's really important, especially if you start building a family, right? Like that will also happen to you as you start getting older. Um, you want to be able to like respect your partner's time or respect your children's time. You don't want to always be working uh, the, because like that's just going to like screw up other things for you. So. Um, when you get all that together, right? Like when you have it all together, then you start realizing, okay, I can actually do this, you know, day after day after day. It's not that hard. It becomes like a habit. It becomes like a pattern, right? And that's actually the final part, right? Like, so if you can start making things happen sort of like unconsciously, you just are going through the motion and you're not really sitting there and questioning, like, why am I doing this? That's when you're like on fire, right? Cause it's like, okay, Today I studied, I don't know, eight hours, right? And, you know, I got through my work, I got that done too, and then like I went to the gym, and then like I, you know, played some video games. So this was an awesome day. And then like, the next day is awesome. Then the next day is awesome. <laughs> and you're just like, oh, then maybe one day out of there, you like kind of like fell. And then you're like, you know what? I didn't study today, or I didn't, you know, like finish my assignment today, or you know what, I didn't get to play a video game today, or I didn't even like get to hang out with my child today. That's okay, because like if you ignore like the small stuff, like where the fail points, and you just keep the consistency and you stop thinking about it, what'll happen is it'll be like, oh my god, 30 days passed already, and like, wow, I got through all this stuff. I can't even believe like I learned all this stuff. I'm like, I'm like good. <laughs> I'm like getting really good at this, right? And so that's ultimately like where you want to get to. That's like, that is like the gold advice. Like I can impart to you, right? So get to a point where you can first appreciate hard work ethic, then do the work that's required. Don't feel like, and this is the summary part for this video, right? Like don't feel like programming sucks because if you feel like that, then you're just going to make yourself like worse, you know, at, whatever your goal is, right? Like, let's say your goal at the time of thinking about doing programming was like, I want to be a programmer and I want to like make, you know, good money and I want to solve interesting puzzles and challenges. If you start like thinking, oh, you know, like this sucks, you know, I'm not good enough for it. I'm just not cut out for it. And you focus on that, it's actually just going to derail you, right? You shouldn't even be thinking about that. You should just be like, did I put in the time? Did I put in the time? Every single day. Um, all right, there we go. So no one's going to care about your goals other than you. Um, and so a year now, right? A year from now, let's say that you still haven't achieved your goals. Oh, nobody's going to really care, right? No one else is going to care other than maybe like, you know, your family members, they're going to say, Hey, you know what? Um, how come we can't move into that bigger house? Or how come you didn't get a Tesla like, you know, your brother did? Like, <laughs> like why are you still poor, right? Like, some people might ask you those shit stupid questions. Um, and you'll have to answer for it, right? Like, because you'll be like, well, you know, like, I'm still, you know, dilly-dallying on my own goals. Those are stupid questions to answer, first of all. You don't need to answer them. But 
Like ultimately, you also don't want to lie to yourself. Why didn't you achieve those things? Well, because you didn't focus on the goal. So focus on the goal. And lastly, like I'll say, you know, um, it, you know, like these things, like m material things, like cars and you know houses and stuff like that, they don't really matter. They're not that important. Um, what is more important is just your overall well-being and your happiness, and you feel like you're actually doing something that is going to make you more successful in life, right? If you can feel like you are successful, that will generate happiness. That will generate, you know, wealth because wealth is a function of your own happiness. The more happy you are and the more you are, um, and I'm not talking about monetary wealth, because that also is part of it, but like the spiritual wealth, the you know happiness wealth, those are all currencies too. So the more you can focus on, you know, building from within and like building, you know, um, commitments and making things happen, right? Like, and, you know, like you're not working from a place like, oh, I just need to work hard because that's what everybody else is doing. You're working hard because you want to be skilled. You want to be better at things. You, in general, you want to be making cool things that people can use or enjoy. And, um, like, I really enjoy making this meetup group. I feel like it's so awesome to just always have so many cool people visiting and giving talks and, um, you know, just really interacting with our group and sharing their knowledge as well as helping you know, just kind of like more people become like overall better programmers. For me, like that's, that is like super awesome. So I really enjoy that. And so that actually makes me more spiritually happy too. So I feel like from there, like, you know, <laughs> the, like I have currency. So for me, like that's ultimately what I'm talking about for you too, right? Cause let's say like I learned all these great skills, um, from, you know, all these different speakers or like, you know, I interact with my audience a lot more. Uh, you know, I can take those lessons and put them immediately into my job or like other assets of my life or facets of my life and, you know, like improve those things as well. And so I, and I've seen that over and over again, a lot of things that I learned from, you know, interacting with people, I've immediately used that business and made business better or like I've made it my interactions with my family better. So, you know, ultimately that's where you want to be coming from a place where you say, oh, I'm going to work really hard for eight hours, or whatever. So. Um, I hope that made sense and, you know, again, this video is more about career advice, right? Because a lot of people ask, like, what should I be doing? Like, how should I get to this? What should I be studying? So my answer to you is going to be general, right? And I'm not going to be very specific on anything because I feel like for this particular video, for that particular question, work ethic matters like so the path for a front-end developer might be like html css and javascript but i would say go through all of it don't just say oh okay you know i learned html in one day css in another day and javascript in like you know a month and now i'm a developer that's not it that's not the end of your journey like literally go and learn as much as you can day out day in um and just even if you feel like oh i already figured it out I don't really need to learn anymore. Go find other things that you could learn about those things and then add to it, add to it, add to it over time. And what will happen is you'll start developing like real credibility. And then if you feel like you did actually get good at those things, go and like do business for people, you know, or like work somewhere and then get good at that, master that. And then eventually if you feel like, oh, okay, you know, like I'm really, really good at all this stuff, I'd say like then, okay, challenge yourself and learn something even more difficult like react or maybe like learn angular and then really stick with that and really really get good because if you do that and you add the hard work ethic you'll be way better than anybody you know like saying oh you know like i studied really hard too you know hand it to me i can do it for cheaper i can outsource no like there will be no question who's better like you'll be in demand always so with that, I want to end this particular video. Um, hope you enjoyed this particular talk. It's a little bit longer, but I felt like, you know, I had to say it. I had to share this with you because um, it sets the tone for how, like, I want to teach all the people who watch this particular channel. So, um, things to come, more videos on uh, programming in uh, the specific parts, as well as more career advice. Um, looking forward to your questions, your comments. What else do you want to know? Um, and then whatever I can think of at the time, I'll put out there. Thanks again for watching. I'm your host, Vijay, and I hope to see you guys, see you girls, uh, see people at a meetup.
All right, thanks. Bye.